All right, you guys ready to get in the Word? Come on, tell me you're ready. Let me tell you, you're not ready, you get ready. Because let me tell you, it's coming in both barrels today. It's ready, fire, aim today. Hey, you guys want to welcome Pastor Sandy Shear into the house today, right there? Pastor Sandy. She's got a, uh, we, we had our baby, our grandbaby Teal at our house for the last week. And um, holy moly, I'm telling you right now. Um, but, but Sandy delivered her to Oklahoma City, passed her off to her parents. And, um, and we, we served grandparent duty for forever this week, didn't we, Sandy? Sandy said, I've got, a, I've got such a newfound heart for mamas. <laughs> Taylor was so easy to raise, wasn't he, Sandy? He's just a perfect child, just a wonderful, and now he's a man of God. Have you guys met my son, Taylor? Taylor, you want to stand? His wife, Cassie. He was already sitting before she got all the way. We've got to work on that Work on that a little bit. Anybody else I want to, want to say hi to? And uh, the Tollivers, they're still married, aren't you? How long has it been now? Two months. How about that, huh? Two months. And, 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 and Katie, who, it, it's crazy that Katie, the little high school track star in that tent at the track meet, has become now a, a, a mother or two. She's going to have a baby, and I heard nine days, nine days till that baby right there. Babies are easy. People are having them all the time. People are raising them. It's when they get to be grandkids. Because it's like, doesn't this baby need a nap or something by this time? Doesn't Time to put her to bed. Well, the sun's not down yet. I don't care. <laughs> Stick her in that crib and shut the door. Turn that noisemaker on real loud. And uh, let's get in the Word. You guys want to? Hey, turn your Bibles to Acts 2, okay? This is how God started the whole shooting match. And that's what we're in here. Do you understand that? This isn't pretty church. This is a dead gum fist fight. We're in a shooting match here. Man, the devil's real, and he's a liar. He's going to lie to you. He's going to try to deceive you, and he's going to accuse you of things, even things that are accurate. And you know what? God doesn't care about any of those. You know why? We're hidden in Christ now. So you might be just a, you, you might have just lived a wretched life for a little while here. Well, let me tell you, not anymore now. You know why? You're named among them. You're sitting in church now. Man, you're, in that, you're on holy ground right now. And this is how God launched this whole thing. In Acts 2.17, <clears throat> and the Bible says, and it shall come to pass. I, I've underlined shall in this verse four times. And it shall come to pass. Okay, it's an absolute. In the last days, says God, that I'll pour my spirit out upon all flesh. That's good for you because you're a part of the all. It doesn't say good people. It doesn't say white people. It doesn't say black people. It doesn't say rich people. It doesn't say educated people. It just says all flesh, okay? Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That's another underlined word there. Your sons and your daughters shall proclaim God's promise. In the margin of your Bible, write proclaim God's promise and put a line, attach it to prophesy there. So you don't think that that's fortune telling or it's, or it's, it's predicting the future. That's not what prophecy is. Prophecy is simply proclaiming God's promise. And let me tell you what that does. It brings, it brings truth into factual reality. Truth trumps, tra- trumps facts. See, that's what we've got to understand. See, the facts of your life may be dismal. The facts of your situation may be difficult. The truth comes in, and you know what God does? He flips the facts. And I'm going to show you here in the Word how God does that. The way God does anything is the way God does everything. God has flipped my life. Remember in the first century, the disciples came into a village and they said, Oh, dear God, it's these who've world, turned the world upside down and now they're with us. Why? Because God flips our worlds. Man, he, he, we go from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of the living God. He said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. See, this is God's promise. See, if I were writing this and I'd use conventional wisdom, I'd have said, your old men will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and and your, your sons and your daughters will dream dreams. But that's not how God does it. See, we're thinking when we're young, we're dreamers. Dreaming of being a professional athlete, dreaming of being a chef, dreaming of being an astronaut, dreaming of being a preacher, all those things. Man, let me tell you, man, when we become mature in the faith, 
<coughs> when we realize who we are in, in Christ, you know what God does? Man, he, he, he causes us to be able to realize our dreams, be able to live our dreams out. See, this is the promise, four shells here of what comes to pass. In, in the sphere of your dream, and it's a time for God to communicate with you even in the busyness of your life, the busyness of your life trying to choke out your dreams. I, I know it's happened to all of us, but what God wants you to do is God wants you to realize your dream, and I believe it can happen today. Anybody with me on that? Man, we can, we can believe God for our dreams to be realized today. See, the, the overriding thought that we get about our dreams is, it, it is usually about enough, being in the right place, having enough time, having enough resources, having the right people around. But let me tell you, let's, let's redirect the dialogue regarding our dreams. See, some of you guys are retired. Some of you guys are just starting a career. Let me tell you, that doesn't matter. Your position in life does not matter when it comes to your dream. Okay, and I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm flat out ticked off about it, that the church, that we have church so often, and people have such a difficult time realizing their dream. So today, it's going to be super practical. Today, you're going to be able to get your phone out, and you're going to take pictures of that screen, and you're going to realize, man, there's steps and there's stages and the how-tos, the practical application to walk out the, the life that you're in right now to be able to live your dream. The overriding thought needs to become, why not me? Why not me? Man, other people, God's not a respecter of persons. Why not me? Man, I, I, other people are, are realizing their dreams. Why not me? See, but, but here's the deal. Here, this is Guts Church. You're hanging out with Bill Shear. We got to dream big. So that means that there's a risk of big failure. But it's, but it's about dream big. You guys heard, Hunter got up and he talked about us, us, um, us, us to supply, get, get, giving school supplies to a thousand teachers in the area. That's a real big deal. And I know it had to kind of sink in and then it was kind of a delayed applause. It's like, oh dear God, what are we doing? Let me tell you, for me, man, my dream is so much more than a thousand. My dream is every classroom in this area. We're going to start off, we're going to say, we're, we're going to, we've got a budget, we've already raised money, we've already, we've already got the capital, we've already got the supplies coming. We're not asking anybody for anything, and we can do a thousand classrooms. Now listen, but there's more, and that's where my dream is. See, some of you guys will say, well, you can't reach everybody, but you can reach somebody. I don't think that way. I want them all. My dream is to reach everybody. My dream is every classroom with, within shouting distance of this church. And not just us that have a one-time gift say, here's your bag of school supplies, here's your Sharpies, here's your, here's, your, here's your colored pencils, here's your paper. No, it's for the school year. It's like, look, we're not just interested in reaching cl teachers and classrooms, we're committed to it. See, so many people, so many people sitting in church, dear God that this isn't that kind of church, but so many people are interested in the gospel. I'm interested in God's promise. I'm interested in, in God's plan for my life. I'm interested with God, in God's purpose. Let me tell you, we've got to go from being interested to being committed. See, it's easy for anybody to be interested. It says, are you a Christian? Well, let me see the fruit of your life. That means you're Christ-like. That means actually you're a little Christ. Man, the fruit of our life has to be that. And I know that we're going to sow wild tares, and I know things are going to come up, but let me just tell you, God separates the wheat and the tares in our life. He doesn't hold that stuff against us. You're, you're not disqualified. But I believe, too, it starts with a dream. It, 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 the, man, the precursor is that we proclaim God's promise as sons and daughters. That's what makes us sons and daughters. But then, then we start getting a vision for that promise. Man, the, the, here's, a, here's a good vision for... Proclaiming God's promise, a vision attached to it is, man, the last time I was sick is the last time I'm going to be sick. And you'll say, well, wait a second, I don't know if you can do that. Really? Yeah. Conventional wisdom will say you can't do it, but what does the word say? No evil shall befall you, nor any plague come near where you live. Not only can it not come into my body, it can't come near where I live. See, th this, is, th this is outrageous. This is outlandish. This is crazy talk. But we've got to understand that. In Deuteronomy 12, 7, and there you shall eat before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice in all of which you have you put your hand, you and your households in which the Lord your God has blessed you. I believe this start, starts with us rejoicing. 
Man, I saw, I saw people, I got up and I, I did my best cheerleader that I could. I'm a cheer dad, I've got a lot of experience in it, all right? Man, I, I'm gonna do my round off back handspring before the service is over, but, but you guys understand, and I've got a great forward whirl and I can do a cartwheel as well, all right? So, but under, I might need some help in the forward roll to, to get me back on my feet, but um, and the car, car wheel's ugly. Um, and, and the roundup back handspring would be a catastrophe. Um, but let's move on. Man, I'm up here and I'm like, man, it, it's lives changed. And, and we're, we're singing hope now and we're singing fear bow. And I saw people like this. Now, l- let me just ask you a question. How in the heck are you going to realize your dream if, 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 if we're shouting at fear for it to bow and you're like this? And you'll say, well, you can't judge my heart. No, I can't, but I can't judge your fruit. I, I, I tell your face to rejoice. <laughs> it might just start there. That might just be a good way to start. Thank you for coming. God bless you. <laughs> no, it's a big deal. It's a big deal that you're impacting people around you. We want to reach the world for Jesus, and you're not even concerned about reach, reaching the people sitting around you with your hands in your pockets. It's like, you know what? The person sitting two rows behind you may be racked in fear, and you're like this. The nonverbals are huge. Man, Francis Assisi said, yeah, he said something important about uh, that I preach and sometimes I even talk. See, and, and we've got we've to understand that, man, this is, a, this is a, a, a committed thing. It's not an interested thing. It's, it's got to be something that we, that we commit to. I, I, I've never aspired in my life to make a living or to have a career, ever. I've never given that one thought, ever. I remember when I, I asked Sandy's dad if I could marry, marry her. And he said, no. <laughs> and you know me, I'll take no for an answer. I just walked out. I said, well, mm, is there a place we can go talk? <laughs> just me and you, where all these other people aren't around. You know, and he's a, he, he's a very smart man, an accomplished attorney, lived, lived in a big house in Jackson, and we went upstairs to his study. He sat by his desk, and I sat like on a stool. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, he, he, I, I said, I, I, I think I heard you say no down there. We need to work this out, okay, because I think this is happening. He said, well, how are you going to make a living? What are you going to do? I hear you're going to go into ministry. What are you going to do for a living? And, you know, for the first time in my life, I was ever confronted with what I was going to do for a living. I never thought about that before. I, just, I was just going to run after God as hard and as fast as I could. I had a dream in my heart, a dream of ministry. And, and I, I said, okay, let's put it this way, sir. I said, I want to marry your daughter. You say yes. You will never have to be concerned ever about me taking care of her or providing for her, ever. You won't have to give it one thought. And somehow God showed up, and he said, okay, that's good enough for me. And he walked downstairs and said, I bless this, this engagement. And, and I looked at it, but listen, I tell, I tell that story, and, and Locke and I are very close now. I'm the executor of his will. He, we're, we, he has a trust now. It's just amazing, but God had to do that. And you have to understand, I've never thought about making a living or having a career. I want to make a difference. That's all I think. Just today, I want to make a difference. It doesn't matter if you gave, gave, gave 10 cents or $10,000 today. I want to make a difference in your life. I don't want you leaving here the same way you came in. And I know that God's word, I know that Jesus is the only thing that can have that kind of la- a lasting impact to make a difference in, in people's lives, and that's what matters. See, blessings and, and even tremendous trials and, and, and lifts and, 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 and surprises and situations of life, those things are the things that cause and spark our dreams to be realized. Man, it could, it, it, it's all on, in extreme levels. It's all, it's all in those places. If you could turn your Bible to the meat that I want to get to today. And, and what this is going to do, I want, you to, I want you to read along with this pertaining a dream coming alive in your life. 
I mean, this is, this is one of those things, I need to contact you. I, 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 I need you to listen. I need you to sit up. I, need to, I want to slap you. I want, you to, I want to grab you by the ears and shake you. I want, I want you to get this. Listen to this in Deuteronomy 28.1. Now, okay, listen, now. See, the five key words for me in, in, in the rest of my life, it's going to be honor, authority, love, trust or faith, and temple. See, temple comes into play for me because God opens up Deuteronomy 28 with the very first verse with this word, now. Okay, there's some urgency. There's some temple here. Okay, now. It shall come to pass. Underline that in your Bible. It shall come to pass. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God, now listen, here's where your dream is sparked, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth over every other people group. God's setting you high above them. See, that's where your dream starts. Your dream doesn't start on the bottom. Your dream starts with the realization to right here and right now, today, that God is going to cause it to come to pass to set you high above all, all nations, all cultures, all races, all people groups, all tribes, all everybody. God's going to set you above them. Man, God's going to set you up for life. And listen to what he sets you up for. You're going to be lifted above him. And this is where your dream begins. And all these blessings, all these blessings, not little, not little microcosm blessings, not little, little eyedropper of blessings. No, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you more than your natural life can contain. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Do you understand? Your dream is birthed just with simple obedience. Let me tell you something, son. You being here today causes a dream to be sparked in your heart. Man, it's happened in your life, a dream. And God, what, what God's going to do, he's going to feed that dream today. Because let me tell you what God does. God feeds it, God feeds it, God feeds it, God releases it. See, it's not going to be released until it's fed. See, that dream has to become like a beast on the inside of you. You feed it, you feed it, you feed it, you feed it, and then God releases it. Why? Because God wants to make an impact on the earth. See, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So he needs your dream to be huge. Are you catching my drift here today? See, my dreams, uh, let me tell you, there's a few statements in my dreams. My dreams are attached to the tithe. The, 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 God says, try, try me on this with, regarding the tithe, okay? It's simple. God opens the windows of heaven and pours out a blessing too great for us to receive. My dreams have people in this room attached to them. Can I tell you, for me to realize and live my dream, I don't need anybody else that's in this room. That's how invaluable this place is for me. I'm telling you, man, I, 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 let me tell you, my dreams are attached to the tithe. My dreams are attached to people in this room. Man, my, 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 my dreams... Man, they stem from the vision of ministry that God gave me as a young man. Man, you got to look back through the podcast and listen to them, but it's, it's I, you come off the county highway and you drive down a path in between, in, in, the, in the middle of the woods, and, and the, the, the trees all open up, and at the end of this path, there's a barn and hundreds and thousands of people there, full of joy. Man, that's my vision of church. See, that's what God's given me as a young man. He gave me a vision of ministry. And you know what? Now I dream about it. See, that's how God does this. So, so it, 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 the, the, the money doesn't factor into it. I don't need more money to do it. Because why? Because it's my, my dream's attached to the tithe. That God opens up the winds of heaven and pours out a blessing. I'm unable to receive it so great. He rebukes the devour from the midst of me. My fruit won't fall into tour from the vine. And I'll be called the delightful land. I don't need gold bullion to get it done now. I don't need another dead gum red cent. Man, I don't need, well, you know, for me to realize my dream, I've got to build, I've got to build a bigger team. I've got to build an army. No, we got more than enough right now. Do you understand the horsepower that's in this room right now? Do you understand the horsepower in Sepulpa right now? The horsepower in Sky took? Man, you guys think about that. Think about what God's doing right here and right now. God's stirring things up in our life. God, God, God's causing us to even think about a dream that can be realized and then deployed in our lives. See, that's what God does. See, when we come together like this, something dynamic 
is bound to happen. Verse 3, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. You may not feel like you fit in in the city or in the country, but it doesn't matter. You're blessed. Man, the next time the devil lies to you and says you don't fit in, I want you to hear, remember these words right here that I'm saying, you're blessed. You walk into a situation and go, man, I don't fit in, but I'm blessed. I don't fit in, but God has blessed me far above all the other cultures on the planet. That's how strong this culture is. And I'm telling you, you're a part of, you're a part of the strongest culture in the universe. That's really good. Blessed shall you be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herd, the increase of your cattle, the offspring of your, your flocks. Listen, your produce, your increase, your increase, your offspring. Blessed shall you be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come against you one way and flee from you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. The Lord will command the blessing. The Lord will command the blessing, the ultimate, the incomparable, the the blessing upon you, your storehouses, and everything you put your hand to. He will bless you in the land which the, the Lord your God is giving you. Three vital things three for living your dream, okay? Here's where the practical part of this comes in. Buckle up, because this may be the breakthrough you need to dream. Number one, it's about commission. God will never give you a dream that's contrary to his word. You're always going to find, and let me tell you, the next time you open up God's word to read it, don't, call, don't look at it just as your devotional, your time with the Lord. Look at it as a time to chase your dream. I'm going to chase my dead gum dream down. My dream is not eluding me another, another day in my life. Everything starts with wisdom and understanding based upon God's word. And, and we've got, we, let me tell you, to, for you to realize your dream, you've got to hear God's voice. To hear God's voice, you're going to hear God's voice in his word. It's not an audible voice. It's in his word. And let me tell you, first time you hear it, it feels like it's audible. See, that's how real. God's word is more real even the, than the audible voices that you hear. Second Th- Thessalonians 2.13, But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by God, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation. Listen, through sanctification by the Spirit and by belief in the truth. It's by his spirit and belief in the truth that God, listen, in order for you to live your dream, the commission of your dream is going to separate you. There's going to be a separation. Might be people, might be stuff, might be a place. The Holy Spirit sanctification separates us from natural perception of our realities. See, what what you look at as a storm, God may very well be looking at as just hydrating your field, man. Just setting, just watering everything down. Man, I'm telling you by the Spirit of God right now, the soil of your heart right now is fertile. Hebrews 11.1, we, we know it, now faith is, it's those things which be not as though they were, and gives true substance to our hopes. We just have to stand firm and fast in in the spirit and truth. And that's where that commission is. So number number one's commission, number two is cultivation. Gotta cultivate it. It's gonna require some work. Seeds from your dream are based on God's word, on God's promise. And listen, those seeds usually take place in Maybe awkward trials or joys or unexpected surprises you have in life. Man, that stuff happens. You're like, oh, dear God, why'd this happen? Why'd this happen? Let me tell you, there may be, listen, there may be a seed for a dream in what you're going through, what you're dealing with. Man, I'm telling you, if it's, if it's God, it's going to require work. It's going to require hard work. It's going to require the kind of work where you crucify your flesh. 
It, it's it's, it's going to require work where you've got to become selfless. You don't think it's hard to be selfless? We've all got opinions. We all care what other people are thinking. Man, we might have to separate ourselves and crucify that in our life. So there's commission, there's cult- cultivation, and number three, and this one's huge, that, that comes into bearing today is collaboration. God's purpose is always our aim. Always. God uses people to fulfill his purpose. I mean, I mean, Sam, God's using Chris just to be a conduit to get you to God's purpose. That's how this works. I believe you're sensing that today. He's great at this. See, see, there's four priorities that, that come with church. The fourth priority is property. We've got 30 acres and 200,000 square feet of building, and we've got a building for kids, and we've got, we got hundreds of people all around this property that aren't in this room. In, in Sky took it, Sepulpa. And so, so there's property, and that's a priority. Man, we got to, to me, there can't be a stitch of trash on the property. I want people to trust us with their souls, and if they can't trust us with the property, I don't know if they can trust us with their souls. So, man, it's got to be, it's got to be excellence everywhere you look, okay? But there's property, and, and the property is that priority because it houses programs, church services, kids' services, next steps, the second mile, kid, the youth services, the, the Friday groceries, the distribution center. All those are programs, listen, that prepare people, which is the second priority. Uh, you'll hear people say, man, it's, it's not about the property. It's about the people. It's all about the people. It's not all about the people, but the people are the second priority. But they're number two. Understand that. I'm number two. You're number two. Because the ultimate priority is God's purpose. It takes property to house programs that develop people to fulfill God's purpose. See, it's about, it's ultimately, it becomes about God's purpose. What's God's purpose for your money? What's God, God's purpose for your career? What's God's purpose for your marriage? What's God's purpose for your children? What's God's purpose for your education? See, too many, what are you going to do? I'm not going to college. What are you going to study? I don't know. Well, let me tell you, you don't know because it, it's about God's purpose in your life. See, let me tell you, God can bless the things that we're purposed in. God's purpose is, is our aim, and God uses people to fulfill his purpose. A threefold cord isn't easily broken. Two are better than one. Jesus sent them out in pairs. Paul said, send me John Mark because he's useful to me for ministry. Look, I'm going to close here. Look at this passage in the context of your dream. And this may be a simple remedy why you, why you haven't realized your dream up to now. Matthew 18, 18, 19, and 20. Matthew 18 is simple. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What God's doing here with you regarding your dream, he, said, he says whatever. And regarding your dream, listen, he's giving you control of it. The control comes away from the enemy. The control comes away from the world. The control comes away from any people. God gives you control of your dream. Whatever you bind, whatever you lose, will be bound on earth as it is in heaven. All right? Verse 19, and then Jesus said this, Again I say to you, now listen to this. If any two of you agree on earth, listen, concerning anything, now listen how the pronoun, it changes from him or her to they and them. Okay, there's a, there's a connection here with somebody pertaining your dream. Again, I say to you that if, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it'll be done for them by my Father in heaven. See, someone's linked to your dream. I know your dream feels personal, 
But I'm telling you, somebody's linked to your dream. In verse 20, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm there and I'm in the midst of them. I'm in the middle of that dream. See, that's what 18, 19, and 20 are in Matthew 18. What that is, is to give you a little window from, from where you are into that haven of dreams that God has for us. See, all of us have dreams that are attached to people. See, that's why my dreams are linked to the tithe. Because now God will pour out a blessing that I'm unable to contain. He'll rebuke the devourer from the midst of me. The devil can't eat up my dream anymore. Why? Because I'm committed to the tithe. I'm not just interested in it. I'm committed to it. See, this is the, the, these three things, the commission, the cultivation, and the collaboration. Man, you look at that, and if you think about it, wait a second. If I start getting this right, man, you think, how, how old are you? 15. You think about it, you start getting it right, blessing? Oh, my gosh. Nothing can stop you. See, because what the world's going to want to say, stand up, blessing. What the world's going to want to say is the world's going to say, no, you know what? You can't live your dream. You, you, don't, have, you don't have enough money or you don't, there's not enough people or you're, you're not in the right place. Man, if you lived on the West Coast, maybe you could. Well, what's awesome about the generation that's on the earth today, see, for me, I grew up in, in Missouri. I could have said, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm out of the mainstream. I'm in a forgotten place here. She can't say that now. Her generation, for the first generation on the planet, is living a global, she has a global vision in life. See, and, and, and for me, I could, you can ask me a question and, and, and I could say, I don't know. And, but her, you can ask her the question and she'll just pop, she'll punch it into Google and she'll know. No, understand the limits. God, God's, God's taking technology, God's taking, but see, God's raising up a new generation here. Let me, let me tell you what she represents. She represents the children of Issachar that are going to direct the church. Man, and Taylor and Cassie, you guys mind standing? Taylor and Cassie are starting a, 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 there's a church campus downtown. They're planning a campus downtown. They're going to start a church service in September on Tuesday nights. It's like, man, and here I am. I'm six years old. We got all this property. We got these buildings. Just do it here. Except for I'm snared by the words of my own mouth because 25 years ago, we put a church at 41st Memorial. Why? Because that's where all the young people were hanging out. We wanted to be right smack dab in the middle of them because I realized that ministry was like duck hunting. You got to be where they want to be. Well, now I realize there's a, you ask me, hey, you want to go downtown? Well, can't we go somewhere closer? But every young person in here, if you say, hey, you want to go to the Dilly Deli for lunch? You're like, Yes. I would say yes as well because sandwiches are my favorite meal. But see, you got to understand, man, God's bringing a new thing and doing a new thing. This is a new thing. It's, it's going to be called the local church and it's a gut church plant. But let me just help you. It's a part of our family. It's just a new generation of ministry. Man, it's just a dream. Is it going to work? I hope so. But let me just help you. Man, everything, if they go to Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 8, and then personalize that to that dream, man, I'll tell you, Roger Walsh and Barb, man, they, they've expressed dreams to me. And you know what? I've never been able to shake those dreams. Man, there's things in their heart, there's things they want to do. And let me tell you something, I am bound and determined for them to live their dream. Man, that God's got a purpose, God's got a plan for your life. There's something special about you guys. Do you understand that? There's something that's going to require a little bit of pruning, but it's going to be, it's going to be those three C's are going to come. And let me tell you, what I want to do is I want to add a fourth C where we just celebrate everybody. Celebrate everyone's dreams. Man, what's in your heart? Does it have to do with volleyball? I'm in. What's in your heart? Does it have to do with businessmen? I'm in. What's in your heart? Does it have to have to do with people that have stumbled and we're helping them get back up? I'm in. Because let me tell you, I don't, I, don't, I don't care what it looks like or what it feels like. All I care about is th does it help people get saved, get healed? Taylor, is it, is it going to help people get saved, healed, delivered? I don't care if it comes in polka dot. I don't. What's in your heart? God's got a plan for your life. I, I want to ask you how old you are, but I'm not going to because that'd be rude. But let me just tell you. No, because the devil has kept you from that dream, kept her from her dream for so long. 
It's important to you, Barb, that she lived, realizes her dream, isn't it? That's what matters. As important as if she does. See, that's why it matters that you're in the room, why the collaboration matters. I mean, look, God's, God's hands are in your life. Whether you trust barbers or not, God doesn't care. You know what? His hand's on your life. Man, there's a purpose for your life. And you know what's in your dream? Thousands of people. You're sitting in a church. Wait, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to fight fair. I'm not going to play safe. No, you know what? Because I don't want to reach some. The Bible says become all things to all men. You might reach some. Man, that's, the, that's, the, that, the, uh, that's step one. Man, you can't, you can't reach everybody. I, I'm going to fight tooth and nail every day the rest of my life to prove you wrong. We can reach everybody. But somehow I got I to gotta get you guys involved. I'm not, I don't know what's going to trip their trigger. I don't know what's going to strike that chord, but guess what God does? That's why God said this. He didn't say some preacher's going to reach you and your sons and daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. He said, no, 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 no. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Here, stand up here, son. God, I just thank you right now for what you're doing in this man's life. God, I thank you that your, your hand's on his life. And God, I thank you for a move of your spirit in him. God, I ask you to pour your spirit out upon him in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that you enrich his life. God, I thank you that you bless him.